welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. A revised fiscal consolidation path was outlined by Finance Minister Tito Mbuweni this week, together with the budgetary implications of the recovery plan. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss what it means. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What new fiscal framework was presented by the Minister? Yes, you know, in, in June we had the supplementary budget where a revised fiscal framework was offered because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown, which had major consequences for the economy. We see now that the Treasury thinks that we're going to contract by 7.8% this year. So it's a major setback to the economy. And uh, we had this really this rising debt load. And in June, we said we would consolidate and start peaking on our debt at about 87% in three years' time. Uh, this was a major bone of contention and it's a very difficult thing to achieve given that we have got this big, uh, these big demands on the fiscus, uh, given that we, it's going to have to play a role, a growth supporting role in some ways during this post-COVID period or this recovery from the COVID pandemic. We're not in a post-COVID period at all yet. But uh, so it didn't look credible. So the revisions that have been made is that we're going to have a much slower uh, consolidation pathway and uh, we're going to have a much higher peak in our, uh, our debt to G GDP ratio. So instead of peaking at around 87%, which is in South African terms very, very high, we're now going to be peaking at above 95% and instead of peaking in three years time, we're going to be peaking in five years time. And even thereafter, we're going to be close to that 95% for a number of years thereafter. So we've got this big debt burden. But to consolidate it at the pace and scale that was uh, uh, proposed in the supplementary budget was, was, was not going to be, I think, supportive of growth, was going to be quite difficult to achieve and didn't and lack credibility. Um, and even this uh, new revised, more moderated, less steep consolidation framework outlined involves m uh, massive amounts of cuts, which are going to be difficult and still there are questions around its credibility. What could it mean for public sector wages and for the country's credit rating? Well, this is the big thing, is that uh, to get even to this revised framework, we're going to require a massive amount of spending cuts or moderation in spending. And uh, over the next three years, it's about 300 billion uh, rand that needs to be taken out of this of expenditure. And the focus is very much on the wage bill and uh, moderating that. Firstly, not applying the last year of the wage uh, uh, increase that was already negotiated, which is highly controversial and is in front of the courts, uh, and then having a wage freeze thereafter. And then on top of that, the minister put out a call for other government employees that are not affected by uh, central bargaining to also uh, find a way to cut those wages or to moderate those wages over the next uh, three to five year period. Now that also will be, uh, I think, popular in society, especially if politicians take cuts and including parliamentarians. But uh, um, to, it's going to be very difficult to achieve. Well, it's going to be a, a difficult politically sensitive process now to get a settlement, uh, one for the last year of the already agreed wage determination and then having a freeze f uh, go going f into the future. Now, I think that, I mean, everyone is very aware that we're in a very diff diff different environment to what we were prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdowns. And therefore, I think there is a willingness to give uh, somewhat. I mean, most in, in the private sector, most companies have had to have either wage freezes or even wage reductions. So the public sector, particularly given the, the debt crunch and crisis that we, are, that we are in and could be heading for a far worse one, I think there has to be some give. But whether uh, the, 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 20, the, the 2018 wage agreement can be ignored is going to be interesting. So therefore, the whole plan, or the, that framework that I spoke about earlier, uh, really hinges on something that's very difficult and therefore uh, could lack some credibility still and uh, we need to see the outcome of the wage, the, the engagements with unions. And therefore, the issue around whether the credit rating agencies, which would be, which would really the, be taken aback by this less uh, steep fiscal consolidation and will be 
uh, running the numbers and what that might mean for South Africa's uh, credit rating. We are really in junk. Um, and whether we are going to a lower notches of junk um, is, uh, is a big question. Um, and if they feel that getting away, uh, the, the, the fact that most of this relies on wage cuts is not credible, then I think we could see some negative actions against uh, South Africa's rating. Where does the recovery plan fit into the fiscal framework? Well, you know, on the expenditure side, there wasn't very much announced by the finance minister this week, other than the a very controversial 10.5 billion for SAA. Um, so really the recovery plan is going to rely very much on the ability of government to crowd in private sector resources, private sector financing for infrastructure, for energy, for digital spectrum, etc. And I think that is really, that is where we're putting our eggs uh, in that basket in terms of uh, everything gets worse if we don't grow. As we can see, this contraction has really knocked the wind out of the sails of South Africa on so many ways in terms of revenue collection, in terms of having to raise additional debt that we all have more borrow borrowings than what we were uh, expecting back in February before the, the, the COVID crisis really hit. So the, the, the recovery plan very much hinges on are we offering a business friendly uh, environment? Are we uh, taking away some of the red tape uh, that's been, been impeding investment in everything from exploration and mining through to infrastructure? Uh, and is there, are these projects going to be credible and bankable? Um, and I, I think there is a pipeline of credible and bankable projects, but I think we, we need to see government really playing its part in, in opening the way for that. If we see that happening, for instance, I think we've seen some major progress in the energy front and RPP procurement is moving ahead. Unfortunately, slower than it should have been, but it is now moving ahead. We could see quite a lot of investment that could send a signal, uh, a surge of confidence into the economy, and we could see investment in other parts. And, but without that, um, that uh, really, the recovery plan really gaining traction, and without us seeing some really signs of growth, beyond just the recovery that obviously we will get from COVID. We need to 3.3% uh, growth next year. Obviously, we need to recover from a massive contraction of 7.8%, but we need to see uh, our potential growth uh, being increased. And therefore, I think the slower, um, less, uh, less aggressive fiscal consolidation was a signal that government also wants to play some sort of supportive role uh, in, in stimulating growth, even though uh, sort of its, its firepower is fairly limited. So, and it's going to rely very much on the private sector and on the structural reforms and on implementation, implementation, implementation of that, without which nothing's going to happen. But I think we, we, the, the, the having a very, very tight uh, f uh, fiscal um, framework behind that would have po possibly not been well, one, I don't think it would have been implementable, and two, it would have had um, a negative effect on the recovery. So I think that was what was, that was the sort of overarching narrative that yes, we, we need to cut debt, we need to moderate spending, um, but we need to do it in a way that's not growth destructive. And uh, it's a balancing act, and uh, whether it is credible will, will depend very much on whether we implement what we've said in the uh, Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan. Thank you. That's the second Tech Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.